We're going to start at Matthew 8, uh, starting at verse 5, right? And so Jesus heals a centurion servant. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a certain centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For also I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does this. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I say to you that many will come from east to west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the, son of the sons of the kingdom will be cast out in utter darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed on that same hour. So, we're talking about a Roman centurion. So, as a Roman came to Jesus, right? And he came for an unselfish prayer, right? In the Roman days, the Romans did not have to keep their slaves. If they were sick, they were paralyzed, paralyzed and tormented, tormented, he could have killed them, got a new slave. But that's not what he wanted. He wanted him to be healed. Right? If you read later in, in other scriptures, it said that that the there were Roman centurion went to the elders, right, of the Jewish elders, and asked them to go find Jesus, right. And Jesus and the elders said, "This guy loves us, right." It's Luke seven one through ten. It says he helps us. He builds synagogues. Genesis twelve. 2 to 3, God says to Abraham, those who bless you will be blessed, right? And those who curse you will be cursed. So the Roman centurion went to the Jew, Jew, elder Jews, said, look for this guy, Jesus. And so they went to him like, this guy helps us. He loves our people. He makes, helps us build synagogues. So Jesus like, let's go, right? Abraham, bless those who bless you, right? So Jesus was fulfilling that. Roman centurions are also mentioned seven times in the, in the, in the New Testament. They were presented as honorable and good men. Right? Romans should Romans could kill their slaves. Right? They didn't have to kill them or do anything for them. Jesus was going to go under the Gentiles' roof, which was a breaking ceremonial laws, but those laws don't pertain to Christ. He was fulfilling the law. He, the laws were to point us to him, right? So as the Romans loved the Jews and built synagogues, therefore Jesus was going to help them, right? Now, one thing Jesus says is, no, I have seen no faith, not, not anywhere in Israel, right? Like this man. Why is that important? Why did Jesus point this out? A lot of people don't, don't catch this. And this is what I'm going to point out for you is that Israel was not a nation. It was a Roman Empire. The Romans conquered them. The Romans had power over them. It was the Roman Empire. But Jesus still called them Israel, the nation of Israel, they had no political power. They couldn't do nothing without the Romans' uh, 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 approval. That's why they sent Jesus to Pontius Pilate. We can't do nothing, right? So Jesus still says, he still says Israel, right? So what does he say? He says, many will come and eat. Many will come to eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the sons of the kingdom of Jews will be cast out in the, uh, utter darkness. Or hell, right? Or Gehenna, right? The Valley Hanum. Replace. What he's saying is, he's saying uh, this was uh, this was the messianic banquet, the messianic banquet, and this is what the Jews said: where all the all the people, all the Jewish people, are going to come and eat with the Messiah, where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Jesus says the sons of the kingdom. He's saying that there's going to be Jews that are going to be cast out in hell and replaced by Gentiles. And that's what he was saying. This Roman centurion, he's going to be at the banquet. And some of you Jews ain't, right? Right? How about that, right? That's a good one, right? It says there's this, that it would be a place where they sit and rest, and, right? A good With good company. That's why it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? A place where it is a place many people will be in the peace and from all ends of the world, east to the west, right? So that's what it means by the same Gentiles, right? Right, so I just wanted to point that out, that one thing that Jesus said, he said is, it is a certain place, right? And many will come, Jesus said it, it will happen and it will happen.
That's my teaching for today about the um, Roman Saturian, right? Have faith, believe, right? Unselfish prayers, right? We The Bible says, bless the Jews and they'll, you'll be blessed, right? So I want to tell you that America was blessed. It was a blessed country until we started pulling away from the Jewish nation. Now this country's falling, right? The Bible is true. The Bible is real, right? Listen to what God says. He spoke to us in his word. So really think about it. I really think about uh, turning your life to Christ. If you have not received that uh, Holy Spirit, you know, I, I want to tell you that, that we have a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And he was sent forth to die for our sins. So if you do not know him, if you have not called out to him, you know, I'm here to tell you if you're listening right now, whenever this happens, 10 years from now, you might hear, hear this message. And I'm telling you, now is the time. Now is the time for salvation. The gospel right, is, a, is the power of God that leads unto salvation. Right. So you can say this prayer after me. Say, Lord God, Father God, who art in heaven, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. I believe that Jesus was sent forth, your son, to speak, teach, and die for my sins. And be rose, and I believe he was rose. Or you rose him on the third day. You raised him on the third day. I believe in the resurrection, and I humbly come to you, a humble servant, fully submitted to you. Give you my life. I dedicate my life to you. You're my savior, my lord. You're king of kings. You're the Messiah, and I confess you as my lord and savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.